The semi-finals of the NRL and the Challenge Cup semi-finals and finals in England have given us plenty to talk about, even if they have ruined my sleeping patterns. This week we had uh, the Panthers played the South Sydney Rabbitohs on the Saturday, but before that, on the Friday, the Melbourne Storm played the Raiders. Both preliminary finals and both were sudden death. Winner goes through to the grand final, loser goes out. I felt the Raiders played their grand final last week. I felt that they run out of juice a little bit. And why do I think that? It's because they started the game quite average. Av quite average. They had a little bit of uh, a problem with preparation. The Queensland government didn't allow them to fly in the night before. They may have allowed that to get to them. But when you are a little bit tired, when you are a little bit fighting to recover well, these kind of things do make a mental a mental impact. And I think Canberra started the game pretty poorly, didn't really get into it. Melbourne were excellent. Melbourne came out the traps really fast. I can't praise enough the coaching job that Craig Bellamy has done. Don't forget, they got uh, uprooted from Melbourne and had to move to Queensland because of COVID and they stayed on the Sunshine Coast. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot worse places you could live than on the coast of Queensland for a short time. But that said, it still wasn't home for them. And Craig Bellamy, if he's not the best coach knocking around, then there's a there's a great discussion to be had as to why not. They looked sharp, they looked energetic, and I think the fact that they scored 30 points, I think it was, and Canberra only got 10, I think that will hold them in good stead for the grand final next week because every time you score a try or concede a try, that's basically about a four-minute rest. And I can't comment too much on that game because I didn't watch all of it really intently, unlike the Souths and Penrith game, which I did. The Penrith team, they remind me a little bit of the Parramatta side of 2001. Not that they've got players who are like-for-like like or anything like that, but the young... They're talented, they play a brand of football that is uh, refreshing and new. But because they lack that experience in so many positions, they have a, a lack of fear. But what they also have a lack of sometimes is sensible decision making in game situations. For example, towards the end of the game there, it was the last couple of sets, they just needed to hold the ball, grind it out, kick it dead, walk to the scrum. They were offloading a little bit and, and, and forcing passes and... That's just one example. But otherwise, I think going into the grand final, Penrith are going to suffer a little bit because that was a humdinger against Souths. Again, credit to Souths, credit to Wayne Bennett, all the Wayne Bennett knockers who said that he was past his sell by day and or he's used by day and he's not the same coach as he used to be. Well, he's got to a team to within four points of a grand final again that is losing players like Latrell Mitchell throughout the season. They weren't at full strength. Um, they lost a player just before kickoff as well, or the day before, and look how close they pushed the best team of the year so far. Um, the key for Penrith is Ivan Cle Cleary's kicking game. He has been sensational with his kicking game. Their forwards are very good at getting the middle of the field, and I think they just play with a gay abandon that has been rarely seen in the NRL for a few years, particularly the 5-8. Their weakness is the right wing. Um, he's he's pretty weak under the high ball and you notice that Souths were, were kicking there quite a lot. I don't often mention players or anything like that because this is always meant to be a bit of a tactical and assessment of, of where things are at. So I think the ascendancy is with Melbourne going forward into the grand final next week. It is a grand final and anything can happen, but the experience is in the Melbourne camp, the experience is with the coach, the experience is with the captain... And there's plenty of players on both sides that are game-breaking players, but I just think Melbourne have the experience and they'll have that little bit of freshness. I also want to give a shout-out to Reynolds, a South Sydney halfback. The way he took the ball to the line, the way he engaged defenders before he passed the ball out the back and that kind of thing, and the way he attempted the 40-20 when he backpedalled and, and tried to kick it off his... Uh, balancing on his left foot while he was backpedalling, it was sublime. Um... He's been underrated for a long time and I literally think he's now one of the game's best halves and it'd be interesting to see how he gets rewarded with regards to representative jerseys in the years to come. And then we went over to England for the Challenge Cup final and obviously I'm from Salford originally so I was very interested in it and Salford have done great things under Andrew Rosler, Ian Bleasy and Watson um, who took over from Marwan Kukash 
uh, when Barwon Kukash left the club, the owner, they put in a community system in place basically where it was a club by the community for the community. And they're the stakeholders and the, uh, um, the, 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 the holders of the club, if you like. They've done a great job. They've got to the grand final last year and they've got to the Challenge Cup final this year, but unfortunately they've lost on both occasions. Looking at that game, Leeds played it perfectly in the sense that they just play a completion game, a completion game, a completion game. If you look at Wigan under Michael Maguire and then Sean Wayne, they were high in completions. Why is that good in Super League? Well, the ruck speed is quite fast. The referees don't let you lie on. So it's just better just to go forward, go forward, go forward, go forward, which is quite a... Uh, surprise when you see team, teams making unnecessary risks sometimes but Leeds were very good at completions whereas Salford on the other hand kept getting pinned back into their 30 or 40 um, that said I thought Leeds in the second half got the jitters and they actually kept Salford in the game with a lot of errors both that game in the Challenge Cup final and a few hours earlier with the semi-final with South and Penrith I used the term knock on -a which was something that used to be mentioned a lot by Sean McRae on Coventry and Sky TV many years ago in England and I've said this on many occasions before players should be holding on to a lot more ball they're full-time professionals and I compare it to a soccer player trying to trap a ball when it's kicked to them or a cricket player who's got to catch a ball or that kind of thing well a rugby league player has to catch a ball and hold it under any sort of circumstances and I just don't think there's enough onus on that in the professional game at the minute there's an awful lot of knock-ons and I've also put it on record and I'm, I'm doubling down on this the standard of Super League has dropped significantly um, there wasn't many great game-breaking players in the game that you thought could really turn the game with a big play it was quite attritional it was a great game but both teams were pretty predictable um, both teams were shifting on tackle four so the defence was ready for them and all that kind of thing um, British Rugby League is in a situation and I don't mean to put a dampener on Salford or Leeds they were both fantastic right in the context but British Rugby League has got to take a real harsh look at itself because honestly if the Kangaroos were coming over this year they would give them a lesson and that is without Cronk and that is probably without Smith and definitely without Slater and all those characters and Thurston as well and English Rugby League is falling further and further behind. The amount of players on that field who are a few kilos too heavy and all that kind of thing. It's a marked contrast with what was going on in the NRL only a few hours earlier. And they can't blame the conditions because they were both dry tracks. So look, well done Leeds. Luke Gale's a handy player and he, he got the winning field goal. Um, I was actually quite surprised he didn't get the Lance Todd Trophy as man of the match. But well done to the fullback Myler who got that too. Look, Predictions for the grand final, definitely a Melbourne win for me. Um, their experience is going to tell, their grand final winning coach experience is going to tell as well. And that will be important in the final analysis. Also, the factor of the 30-point victory, the 30-10, to 10, and the breather they'll have had in the game and all that kind of thing. But what an NRL final series it's been. Um, I've enjoyed it. And we'll do a preview and a review of the grand final next week. All the best.